Well, all eyes will be tapped in tomorrow for the annual Orange and White Spring Game for Texas, and they have quite the QB battle in Austin between Arch Manning and Quinn Ewers. Both, of course, rated as number one overall recruits coming out of high school, but when it comes to Manning, he became the first number one overall pick or player to sign there since Vince Young back in 2002. As for Ewers, let's just say he's maybe much improved since his debut just a season ago, but that does give options there for head coach Steve Sarkeesian when it comes to QB1. Others will be on tap tomorrow and plenty to watch there. Of course, Clemson, sophomore Kate Klubnick has a starting job with DJ Uyangale taking his talents to Oregon State. Florida State, the Seminoles, maybe one of those trendy picks when it comes to the CFP in the future. Georgia, all eyes on Carson Beck and Brock Vandergriff on G-Day. And Ohio State, life after C.J. Stroud, that should be interesting. And then at the bottom, USC, Heisman Trophy winner Caleb Williams, he is back under center in 2023. So we have so many questions and nobody better than my guy here, director of scouting for 24-7 Sports, Andrew Ivins in the building for us. And let's start there, of course, what we see behind us here at Texas. You got Clay, uh, Arch Manning and Quinn Ewers there. Should be interesting because, again, these are two top guys. Quinn Ewers was the guy last year, but Manning, he comes with the name. We saw what he did in high school. How could this battle kind of pan out here? Well, I still like Quinn Ewers to be quarterback one for Texas, but just making some phone calls this morning, talking with some people there in Austin familiar with the program, they say Arch Manning has exceeded expectations, and that's a bit crazy to hear, right? A number one overall player with a one of one pedigree. What they say Arch has pushed Quinn Ewers, right? And it'll be interesting to see how things play out on Saturday, what the two look like in a simulated game of a sort. But I think if you're a Texas fan, that's music to your ears. You want to hear that Quinn Ewers is getting pushed. You know, in 2022, only completed 58% of his passes, 15 touchdowns, six interceptions. Can he take a step forward in 2023? And, you know, if he doesn't, then Arch sounds like he's going to be waiting right there in the shadow. So certainly one to follow. And there's a third quarter back in the mix Malik Murphy former elite 11 finalist big arm quarterback from California what happens with him if Arch solidifies himself as number two does Malik Murphy enter the transfer portal he would certainly be a coveted name so questions here for the Longhorns who are looking trying to get back to Texas football we haven't seen in quite some time in Ohio State they're looking to replace over 3600 passing yards and 41 touchdowns of course, who's the option there? C.J. Stroud is gone. So what are we looking at for the Buckeyes? Well, Brian Day said he would have liked to make a decision on his quarterback this spring. That's probably not going to happen. You have Kyle McCord, one of the quarterbacks, and then Devin Brown's the other. Devin Brown just had a procedure on his finger, so he's going to miss Saturday's spring game. So this is an opportunity for Kyle McCord to come in and show that he's the guy. I don't think that's probably going to happen. I think they're going to drag this over the summer months in the fall camp. But Kyle McCord, another highly ranked passer, me, having seen both of them coming out of the high school, I probably uh, lean more to Devin Brown. He's a kid from Utah. He has all the tools and, and someone that played in the All-American Bowl for us. So uh, another interesting one. And uh, Ohio State has a bunch of guys out for the spring game on Saturday. So it's going to kind of be an opportunity for the younger guys, some of the transfers they got in to make a name for themselves. Similar situation in Athens. We were talking about a top prospect there. Uh, you got to think about two-time champ Stetson Bennett. He's no longer there. What are the options there for Ryan Day if he's looking for a QB1? Excuse me, not Ryan Day <laughs> there, excuse me, but QB1 there for the Bulldogs. Kirby Smart, yeah, he's got a, three options, right? Carson Beck has been the guy uh, that has been the star of the past two spring games. He's completed over 65% of his passes, close to 500 yards. Sounds like he's kind of the favorite, but there's two other arms pushing him. Gunnar Stockton, uh, a freshman that only threw three passes last year in the spring game, hasn't appeared. And then another Ballyhood recruit, uh, Brock Vandergriff, who's now been on campus for a few years. So uh, three, three quarterbacks all duking it out. Um, uh, Carson Beck is not the highest ranked of the bunch, but look at what Stetson Bennett. I mean, he was not a four or five star recruit. So I like Carson Beck. I think he's got the tools to run that offense. And remember, they got a new offensive coordinator coming in. Todd Mockin's gone. Mike Bobo gets promoted, but they're going to keep the same terminology. Uh, so one to also watch on Saturday for the two time defending national champs. So we'll see, of course, who starts for QB1 there for the Bulldogs at UT Martin September 2nd. But of course, if you don't like those options you have in house, Guess what? The transfer portal will reopen on Saturday. Who are some of the names you might be watching for? Maybe some of these spring games come Saturday. You know what? That might be an option come day one. 
Yeah, well, a big name just announced last night that he's going to enter the portal. Jeffrey Mpemba, he's a defensive lineman from Auburn, was in line to actually get some starting reps for the Tigers, but he's going to test the transfer market. Uh, and he's the uh, from France, former number one junior college recruit. I've heard Clemson. I've heard Miami involved there. You see Hayden Wolf, the quarterback from Old Dominion. He started 12 games this past season, and, and everyone's looking for quarterbacks. The University of Florida last night, Billy Napier, you know, they had their scrimmage, lowest scoring orange and blue game ever. Hayden Wolf is from the state of Florida. Could he be an option for the Gators as they try to fortify that quarterback room? And then Derek McClendon at the top. He's an edge rusher that started for the Seminoles, right? He's visited Missouri. He's visited South Carolina. Everyone's looking for kind of the same thing in the transfer portal, right? You want pass rushers. You want quarterbacks, cornerbacks, offensive tackles. The premium positions are coveted. And just talking with college coaches here over the past few weeks, usually this time of the year, it's all about recruiting the spring evaluation period. But it's, hey, we're buttoning it up and we're gearing up for a crazy you know, few days in the transfer portal. They want to see who's going to enter, and then they want to get them on campus as soon as possible. So there's going to be a lot of free agency. Everyone's trying to upgrade that roster. Maybe it's the sixth offensive lineman you need or the third cornerback. Everyone's fighting for the same kids. Plenty of options out there for some of the top programs, of course. He's Andrew Zion. Appreciate his always breaking it down. And don't forget 24-7 Sports. The guy's always covering it for you. Everything you need when it comes to recruiting updates, wall-to-wall team coverage, transfer portal. Hey, it opens Saturday. All you got to do is keep tabs with them. The crew always dial it up across the board. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.